Hello. In this video, we're going to introduce the concept of shocks, as in how they are applied uh, in flow and force media. A shock is a discontinuity, in this case, a discontinuity in saturation that propagates through the rock. And it'd be thought of as a, essentially a water front. I inject water, high water saturation propagates and displaces a lower water saturation. And that shouldn't be too counterintuitive in that if I inject water at a high saturation, that water is quite mobile. It can flow readily through the porous medium. A low water saturation flows well, much less readily. So it will be slower. And so you can't really have slow moving water um, in front of fast moving water. But we also encounter shocks in other situations. So for instance, if there's an explosion, you hear a loud sound. Okay, that is essentially a discontinuity in pressure that's moving. A sonic boom is the same. It's a discontinuity in pressure that then moves at the speed of sound. More dramatically, um, if a nuclear bomb explodes, there's this bright flash. That's essentially a discontinuity with, with um, radiation of all wavelengths, again, propagating in this case at the speed of light. So we are used to knowing that we can have discontinuities. If we're looking at a discontinuity, say, from a loud bang or an explosion or a sonic boom, here we know that it's not a true mathematical discontinuity. There is a mean through path um, of the air molecules, and we can't obviously have a discontinuity in pressure below that. And we're going to see the same when we come to multi-phase flow and pause media. It's not a true mathematical discontinuity. It is smeared out um, over a length uh, moderated by capillary pressure. But we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that in depth. Let's first of all go straight to the whiteboard here. So we're going to talk about uh, shocks. That's what's written here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to derive a conservation equation for a shock, a discontinuity, moving through a porous medium. So the way I'm going to do that is, hopefully if I can draw some uh, straight lines, okay, on this axis is going to be saturation, and on this axis is going to be property distance, okay? So this is saturation, and this will be distance. And I'm going to do this in dimensional units, not dimensionless, and then convert. So we're going to imagine that we have a blow up right at the shock. So we're not sort of worried, okay, the saturation might change on either side, but we have some saturation, which although it's not drawn very well, is supposed to be a constant saturation, which is a left state, and a saturation the other side, which we call SWR. So we have a saturation here, a saturation here, and a discontinuity. And a larger length, so that, 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 that saturation may vary, but it may vary, we're assuming that's a smooth variation of constant state. At the shock, it's a discontinuity. And what we want to do, because we, we know we're looking at speeds, we want to know the speed of the shock, which I think is. And uh, so imagine we have that profile shown in the solid line at time t. In a time delta t, this shock will propagate a distance v shock delta t. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to invoke conservation of mass, just as I did in a previous video, but where in the end we made delta t and delta x tend to zero. Um, here we're going to relax that assumption. We don't necessarily have to write about but we still do conserve mass. So the mass here that moves in, if we have associated with SW left a fractional flow, left side, okay, and on the right side we have a fractional flow that's associated with this, then we know that the volume flowing per unit area per unit time is QT, FW left, that's what's flowing into the box. If we imagine this really as a box with some explicit area, it's A. Okay, so this is, now let's go through it. This is a volume per unit area. So this becomes a volume 
here. We've got the fractional flow because this is equivalent to just QW. So that is the volume flowing per unit time times delta T. That's the volume that flows in. The mass will be multiplied by the density. Okay? And obviously, we're going to assume that the density is a constant. So that's, that's not going to be, uh, it's just going to cancel out in the end, isn't it? So this is the mass in. This is the mass that flows in. Okay? The mass that flows out is going to be the same mathematics but this is the right state. So we have water that moves here. This is moving with the shock. There may be water that's moving here on the right side of the shock. So this is the mass that would flow out. Okay. So this is given by this, and then we've got the delta T. So that's got to be equal to the change in mass. And the change in mass is basically this. So the change in mass is due to this change in saturation. Isn't it? So this has got to equal to the change in mass. Okay. So what's that got to be equal to? Well, we've got a saturation that goes from SW right to SW left. So the change in saturation is that. Okay. Then that's a saturation. We multiply it by phi. And now we need to multiply it by the pore volume, which is area times delta x. Now delta x is from shock delta t. And then we have a row w. So what we have here is this is the change in mass associated with a shock moving for a time delta t at a speed vs because there's going to be this change in saturation. And this has got to be equal to the mass that flows from the left state, as it's called, right, to the left of the shock, and the mass that flows out from the right, um, that's the right side of the shock. Okay, so we can, we can look at a few things here. The areas, of course, are going to cancel. So are the densities, if we assume that we have a So now we want to rearrange this, and we also notice that in fact delta t is a dummy. That cancels out. And so we can write an expression up here, V shock. Okay, we've got a change in F and a QT. So it's a QT FW left times FW right. Okay, that's the, these terms, and then it's going to be divided by phi and an SW left. And sometimes this can be written maybe a little bit more elegantly as QT over phi, delta F over delta S. So it's the change in fractional flow across the shock divided by the change in saturation. And the dimensionless shock speed, because I've said before, real speed is QT over phi times the dimensionless uh, speed. The dimensionless speed is just delta W over delta S W. And I advise you to go back and look at the definition of dimensionless variables to see that, um, which hopefully is reasonably obvious why, that, why that's the case. Okay, so that's your dimensionless uh, shock speed. And the rather nice thing about this equation, this is actually quite important, is that it covers all the cases. So if there's a discontinuity in saturation, if there's a discontinuity, then the speed with which this discontinuity travels is the change in fractional flow divided by the change in saturation. If on the other hand, in fact, there was no discontinuity, this was a small change, and therefore I could take the limit that these deltas go to zero, then the, we would simply have a speed that's the FDS, which is what we derived before. So in fact, this derivation, simply looking at the explicit conservation of mass, is rather more general um, than assuming a partial differential equation from the outset. It has actually both cases, the shock and the rarefaction. So this, this is called a shock, okay? here and this uh, as we've said before is a rarefaction and we also know that a constant uh, saturation is also a solution. 
So the last thing I want to say is, well, this is a discontinuity. It, it, it does represent, you know, if you think of the large scale, it's, it's a rock, I'm injecting water at a high saturation, it moves through, and there's essentially a front, right? A, a sharp change in saturation as it displaces oil. That's, that, that, that's correct, that, that, that makes sense. But is it really a mathematical shock? The answer is no, you know, why, why are we getting this discontinuity? It seems a bit strange. The reason is physically that we've ignored capillary. So what happens in the field with capillary pressure present, and I'll show that in blue, is that we get some degree of imbibition. And so because of capillary forces, here we have a low water saturation, capillary pressure is quite high, water will want to imbibe here, okay? And then here some water will be left behind. So in fact, in reality, though this isn't drawn very well, the sharp front is a little bit smeared out, and that's due to capillary pressure. There isn't a genuine um, shock. And what's the extent of this? Well, actually, the extent of this is basically the length over which capillary pressure and the viscous force, the advection that we talked about, the pumping force or the pressure due to that are about the same. And that's a length, actually, like my hands, it's a length that's typically in the field about a meter or so. Now that might seem like a significant length, it seems like a significant length when I'm dealing with a small piece of rock like this, but at the field scale where we're looking at displacements over several hundreds of meters, it's still small. So it's still a perfectly reasonable approximation to say that we have a sharp change in saturation. Okay, in reality, we know it's smeared out due to capillary. So I'm gonna click this now. And so what we're going to do is we're going to try and find a solution to a partial differential equation that is as follows, dsw by dt plus, and these are partial differentials, right, and this is sw, and we're going to look at a solution that's a solution where we have just VD is XD over TD. These are dimensionalist variables. VD is just XD over TD. So we're going to find a solution SW that's simply function of VD. And we're going to look at three, the three ways in which we can construct this solution. One is a constant state. So that's basically SW is constant. One is where the saturation varies smoothly with distance or indeed with VD, and we have a dimensionless phase that's DFW by DSW. And the other is where we have a shock, where the speed of the shock is the change in FW across the shock divided by DSW. And we also want to obey the boundary conditions. I'm going to, because this isn't as clear as it could be, I'm going to rub this out and write it write it down uh, a little bit more clearly. Okay, and then we're going to have the boundary conditions that are gonna be at x d equals naught and t greater than zero, we have a saturation, it's one minus SOR, and that for t equals zero and x d greater than zero, zero, we have SW, this is the initial condition. So this is the initial condition, this is the injection condition. So that really sets up um, my problem mathematically. Okay. Um, I'm gonna look for a solution where the saturation is just a function of velocity, so this x over t, so everything's just moving with a speed, and if I double the time, we just move twice as far, essentially we just stretched out the profiles, um, with these three things, uh, um, a constant state, a what's called a rarefaction, or a shock. Okay, so we're going to stop there, okay, um, and we'll actually go through the solution in a subsequent video. Thank you very much.